What's up guys, it's McNulty here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing well and I hope you're ready for another episode of Looney Tunes uh, because the costume portal has just opened up again. And of course, we are beefing it up. We've got some new Toon Heroes in here. Uh, we've got Magni, who's just dropped into this portal. Um, and we've also got Melendor, Cademan, uh, Balthazar, um, and the lovely Brienne. So they've all just received their Toon costume. Uh, their third costume for most of them. Second for the three stars. So uh, we're going to go ahead and have a look at these guys today. Um, just go over which ones that I think are worth sort of chasing, if any. Um, so we're going to start off with the monstrous Magni. Um, who's an absolute staple. Um, he's just an insanely good hero. Um, so in terms of the costume, the Toon costume bonus, um, they do get a huge increase in their stats. So the attack bonus goes up to 35%, defense at 35%, health at 60%, um, and the mana bonus stays at 5%. So in terms of beefing up your hero's stats, making them more relevant, uh, these costumes are definitely going to do that for you. Um, even with the max power preview off, you can see he's got a team power of 1,023, which is humongous. I mean, over 1,000 team power just at the maximum level without any talents. Um, these heroes are definitely leading the game in terms of stats at the moment. They probably won't be for long, uh, but they are just for right now. Um, now, they get the classic family bonus as well. Where if you have more than one classic family hero on the team, uh, they get an increase for their attack, defense and healing like they didn't already need that. It's just boosting everything. You know, that's why we've seen these tune teams in the top. Um, you know, I think if you scroll just through the top few defenses, raid defenses, you're bound to find a few of these tune heroes in there. Um, so that family bonus is really, really good if you do pair these Toon Heroes with each other. Um, of course, Magni is still of the fighter class. Um, so we're going to compare him to his original costume in just a second, uh, because that will be the same as what this one is. Um, so the passive for these Toon Heroes is this chance to resist all status ailments. So mana reductions, buff dispels and status ailments, they get a 75% chance to resist those. And I think by now we've all had a chance to fight against these Toon Heroes, at least in the raid um, format of the game. And just that can be extremely frustrating, not being able to cast ailments um, or to dispel the buffs that they cast. It's really, really difficult to take these heroes down. Um, and I think, to be honest... And, you know, I was lucky enough to pull Magni, actually, uh, this morning. Um, I just did a couple of pulls in the summon portal. And I'll show you here. I've got Magni there. I already had his second costume maxed. So it's not going to take a huge amount for me to max this one out. Um, but even so, I'm not a huge advocate of that being at 75%. I think 50% would be okay. Um, you know, anything more than that just makes these heroes extremely difficult to deal with and obviously quite sought after. So I guess there's kind of two flip sides of the same coin there. Now, in terms of the special, it's a little bit different. So let's look at his old uh, costume that, that we're sort of replicating here with the Strike of the Toons. So it was Strike of the Ancients originally. Uh, he is running at fast speed and he deals 420% damage to the target. And then the caster and nearby get plus 63 defense for four turns. He was one of the premier heroes when, re when released. Um, just a really hard hitting sniper and then giving your allies that... <clears throat> And the nearby allies, that defense increase really does help. Um, so now he's going to be dealing 500% damage to the target um, with a pretty damn huge attack stat. So that's going to hurt. Uh, the caster and nearby allies get plus 56% uh, defense for four turns. So they've reduced the amount of defense that they get. Um, but remember that buff then becomes undispellable for him and if you're pairing him up with other toon heroes uh, it could be undispellable for them as well or the 75 percent chance to be undispellable so that is really good um, and then an extra damage against fire enemies uh, which we didn't see before so that's been added in there um, i'm not sure exactly how much extra damage that's going to deal um, but overall i think this is a great hero 
Um, his best form is probably the second costume. So this one. Um, and if you do obviously have a look at increasing the stats for this one, I think it will serve you extremely well. Um, I use him on uh, one of my attack teams for war uh, alongside uh, Miriam and Midnight and Pengi. Um, and once he hits that uh, defense down against special skills, um, just means that they're taking a huge amount of damage. Um, so yeah, it's only 285% damage, but it is to the target and nearby with this one. Um, and then they get negative 64% defense against the special skills for four turns now you do lose out on the tune um, passive <clears throat> so I'd say um, in this format he's best for an attacking team um, but in this format he's probably going to be better on a defensive team um, I would not necessarily put him in as a tank he does get the revive talent which is pretty good for tanks um, but because he's running at fast speed I would rather put him in on the flank um, not so much on the wing. I do like him on the flank because he gives the additional defense then to the tank as well. So I think he's going to be used really usable in that position. Um, and an awesome, awesome tune costume for him. I'm still not a huge fan of the art of these tunes, but I think for him, it's probably better than some of the others. Makes him look a little bit more human. Um, correct me if you think I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Now let's move on to the other tunes that are new in the portal. Um, so we've got Cademan. I mean, Cademan is just a beast of a hero. Again, he's one that's running at fast speed. He's one that gets used a lot. Um, you're probably going to see a lot of him in the raid tournaments. Um, it's too late to then level him for this one that we're currently in the bloody battle. Uh, but I'd say that he would be extremely usable in that format. Uh, we have seen the um, Druid class talent um, be reduced. Um, so the superior companion is now a 20% chance to summon the thorn minion. Um, so a lower percentage chance to summon that minion uh, unfortunately uh, but other than that the stat boost is humongous uh, humongous <laughs> i'm making up words today um so yeah 1019 team power that is with the second limit breaks but bear in mind um you will need just the one extra alpha ether on top of the three that you use to limit break the original costume uh so only a total of four alpha ethers to be able to get him to a thousand and nineteen team power um that is with the limit breaks and emblems on um, but he can definitely hold his own um again the costume bonus is pretty much well very similar but not quite as high uh so 17 percent on the attack and defense 22% HP bonus and 5% mana bonus. So he's sticking with the 5%. I wonder if we're going to see any changes to that. You know, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I think it would just be too much. Um, but he does get the tune passive as well. Again, that chance to resist status ailments, mana reductions, and buff dispels is absolutely huge for this character. Um, and he benefits from the special boost on the ether talent. <clears throat> So at the beginning of the battle, uh, his special skill is going to deal an additional 30% damage uh, for six turns. So that's pretty huge for a hero that's running at fast speed. Now, if we compare the Toontastic Strike, which sounds terrible, uh, to the Piercing Strike, uh, it was 345% damage to the target and a buff dispel from all enemies, which is really useful at fast speed. Uh, it's now 350% damage to the target. Um, and again, we're seeing a common theme here where he deals extra damage against ice. Um, and he's still dispelling the buffs from all enemies. Just bear in mind, he doesn't have a priority dispel. Um, so if you are going up against a counter-attack hero, he's going to take that damage first uh, before he dispels. But still an extremely usable hero. Um, I'm going to say the same as I did just now for Magni. Um, in terms of costumes, uh, this by a huge margin is absolutely the best costume for Cademan. Um, he does sacrifice the dispel um, for, for all to a dispel for the target and nearby. Um, but he does get the target and nearby are immune to new status effect buffs for three turns so he prevents uh, the target and nearby enemies from receiving buffs and he deals an equal amount of damage of 275 percent to the target and nearby so if you do get this tune um, i would level up 
all of the costumes uh, but I would definitely say that this version I would use for attacking teams uh, he could be good on defense as well in a pinch because of the ether talent the dodge ether talent so it's a pretty decent one and it makes him harder to kill at the start of the battle um, but for the tune passive and that pretty much alone I would say that he would stand better on a defensive team uh, in the original version um, and with that special skill boost he's going to be hitting like a beast right from the right right from the word go um, so yeah that's it for Cademan now, the other costume that we have in here is the Mighty mighty Melendor. I was going to say Gandalf for a second. Um, he is definitely reminiscent of Gandalf. I think there's some kind of copyright infringement going on here. And we had Disco Gandalf, which was probably my favorite. Um, and I did grab this one, and I do love it for the attack increase. Uh, we've had the um, increased defense. This one's probably my least favorite of all of them. Um, but I think that the base version of Melendor is probably the best format to use in an attacking team. Um, just because he gives that big upfront heal. So you can see it's a 42% um, health recovery for all allies. And then dispels buff from all enemies. And because he's not... Um, he's not uh, dealing any damage um, there's no kind of negative effect in there be the fact that he heals first is quite okay um, and he benefits from the ailment immunity ether talent which is a great great ether talent because at the beginning of the battle for six turns um, he's immune to new status ailments so yeah just a great hero all round um, I'd be hard pressed with this one to be honest so let's see if there's any big differences here so it looks like there's a lot going on. Uh, so he recovers 45% health for all allies. The Toontastic Fog. <laughs> um, all allies get plus 34% defense for three turns. Okay, so they've added something extra in there. Um, for all nature characters, the status effect becomes undispellable and lasts two turns longer. Um, and then he dispels the bus from all enemies. So... Yeah, he's he's good. He's really, really good in this format. Um, so yeah, the, the the tune passive, the bigger health recovery, the increased defense, and the fact that it becomes undispellable for nature. Um, yeah, I'd I'd say go ahead and use him. Even I mean the ether talent aside, that's not gonna that's not gonna edge this version of Melendor over the tune version. Um, and again, I do like the art for this one. I think maybe these tunes are growing on me. <laughs> maybe I'm just going mad. Um, but yeah, I do like that. Um, and the fact that he gets that special armor, so an increased defense against special skills for six turns at the beginning of the battle, makes him pretty damn usable as well. So yeah, an awesome, awesome hero. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> yeah, I've got a bit of a cough coming on. Anyways, we have got one new hero left. So if my throat will allow me to survive, we're going to have a look at this one too. No, two of them. Okay. Um, so Balthazar, nah, Balthazar um, also has a Toon costume. Uh, so here's one. Let's just really go over this quickly. So Electric Jolt, uh, he used to deal 335% uh, damage to the target, running at fast speed, which is cool. Um, his actual costume here with the poison damage was quite good, um, but only for a flash in the pan. I think he kind of went out of style pretty quickly. Um, but now he deals 365% damage to the target and extra damage against Holy. So that's a huge snipe. Um, and his stats, as you can see there, um, are just getting beefed up to no end. Uh, the costume bonus for these ones, they also get, they do benefit from the 5% mana bonus. Um, for fast speed heroes and for slow speed heroes, that's actually pretty good at the three star level. But um, the troops are very limited that you're going to be using on them. Um, so yeah, this version is definitely going to be the strongest version you can get of ba Balthazar. Um, and I think that he makes a pretty good both attacking and defensive hero really um and with this tune um jolt now um being at 365 percent damage that's gonna hit hard at the three star level bad enough said about balthazar now 
Uh, the other one, which is a bit more interesting, is Brienne. Um, so I was saying in the balance update video that Brienne's taken a huge knock because of the druids um, and using her as a titan hero. Um, this kind of can impact that a little bit. Um, and I wasn't thinking about the costume that you'd use for titans being the cleric class one uh, rather than the druid class. Um, so I do like this and I, I did manage to grab this one as well, but I think it's an excellent boost for the stats. Um, I don't really use Brienne in a great amount of other areas other than against the, the 14 star titans uh, because of the increasing defense down that bulwark effect. Um, but I think that... <clears throat> With the stat boost on this one, um, it's going to make her that much more survivable against those big titans. So as a defense down in nature, you can't really do much better than Brienne um, in her in her initial costume. Uh, she doesn't have that many other areas of usability. Um, but with this Toon costume as well, I mean, if we just look at the differences, because there are some subtle differences between the costume version and the original version, it's pretty much the same special, uh, just added on the Toon passive and the stat boost. Boost, uh, but there are also some other subtle differences. So um, in the original version, at the Berserker Fury gave all allies 45% increase attack and a further 20% increase every time they're hit during five turns. So it can stack up to 145% additional attack, which is humongous. Um, I don't think it's quite 145 because I think it kicks in from turn two, but it's a huge increase in attack um, and it's for all allies as well. And she gets the defense up as an ether talent. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Now, with this version, um, she gets the defense up ether talent as well, um, but all allies also get the 45% attack and a further 20% increase every time they hit during five turns. But the difference is, and it's a big difference, for all nature characters, the status effect becomes undispellable and lasts two turns longer. So here we have a hero that is increasing the attack of your entire team, potentially, if you're a full-on nature team, or say three or four heroes if you're attacking three, two, or four, one. But it's just not going to be cleansable. Not just from her because of that passive, but from everyone. So she's going to be giving that huge attack increase. It's going to last for a total of seven turns for nature characters. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's going to be capped because I think it's got to be capped at some point. Um, but this hero, mark my words now, she is going to be a monster of a support hero now with this costume. And I'm really excited to level her. Um, and I'm really excited to see how much damage I can get out of some of the other three stars. And there's some pretty good hitters in the three star category, which are, hit, uh, are hitting um, <clears throat> more than a single target. Uh, so three targets and things like that. You've got Zorola and you've got um, the other one from the Mars Gods family. Um, they're really going to be well paired up with Brienne. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to leveling that one up. Uh, so that is it for all of the new costumes in the Toon Summon portal. I wish you guys all of the best of luck in your summons. There are some absolutely dope heroes in this portal um, please do let me know in the comments what you think about these new tunes uh, let me think you know if i've got it on the money or if i'm talking crap whatever you want to say is all good uh, drop me a comment uh, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any future videos i wish you guys all of the best and i'll see you all again in the next video